With his tattoos, sculpted beard, and immaculate fashion sense, Dave Navarro is one of the most recognizable guitar players out there. But like many musicians, his life has not been easy. Here are some of the darkest events that shaped Dave Navarro. Navarro has had his share of well-publicized tragedies, but possibly the most terrible one came when the aspiring guitar god was only 15 years old. As NME reported, Navarro's mother, Constance Colleen Hopkins, was murdered in March 1983 when her ex-boyfriend, John Riccardi, shot her and another woman in West Los Angeles. Ultimate Classic Rock reports the murderer spent almost a decade on the loose and was only captured because of a viewer tip after the case was featured on America's Most Wanted in 1991. Riccardi was initially sentenced to death in 1994, but in 2012 the verdict was set aside because of issues with the jury selection process. This didn't mean Riccardi walked free, though, as he was promptly re-sentenced to a life without the possibility of parole. The experience was particularly awful for Navarro because he was supposed to be there on the night of the murders. It was actually a, a miracle that I wasn't home because I think that obviously if I was home that night, uh, it would have gotten me too. He attributes this turn of events to divine intervention. Less divine, however, is the fact that he still has to fight with the media over the portrayal of the incident. In 2018, Navarro was less than thrilled to discover that Geraldo Rivera's murder in the family ran a factually erroneous episode about the case. As a teenager, Dave loses the family member he cherishes most, taken from him by a violent, jealous man driven to kill. In a since-deleted Instagram post, Navarro accused Geraldo of getting the story wrong, adding, I did not find a body and I did not turn to drugs after this event. I was well on my way to using drugs even before this took place. Navarro entered the limelight as the guitarist of Jane's Addiction, and to say his entrance was explosive is a criminal understatement. Guitar World calls Jane's Addiction a stink bomb that kicked the haughty hair metal bands that ruled the late 1980s airwaves off their pedestals and served as a precursor for grunge with its anti-corporate attitude and raw sound. However, the fact that they burned bright meant they also burned out quickly, releasing just two studio albums before self-destructing. In 1991, the band evaporated in a cloud of personal chemistry issues brought on by their hectic touring schedule, which caused increasing strains and fights both on and off stage. The leading personalities of the group, Navarro and singer Perry Farrell, still can't agree on what ultimately caused the collapse. Farrell feels the breakup was, quote, based on emotional reasons, as everyone kept knocking down his ideas and he felt his creativity was facing a wall. Got into a big sock out, literally body slam. Navarro, on the other hand, makes it clear he thinks the band was ended by Farrell's intense personality, combined with the band's copious drug use and the fact that they never even tried to talk about their differences. And, you know, he convinces you that it's got to be a certain way. And then you know what happens? He's right. <laughs> time and you're like god with feral of course their 1991 breakup was far from the final one there have been multiple reunions over the years but considering the band has broken up more than once it's possible their communication skills still leave something to be desired living a lifestyle of sex drugs and rock and roll is not necessarily conducive for long-term marital happiness and navarro is no exception According to Inquisitor, the rocker has been married three times so far and all of them have ended in disaster. According to MTV News, his first marriage lasted two years and his second was annulled after only a month. Navarro's most high-profile marriage was his third one with actress Carmen Electra. In 2004, the two documented their road to the altar in an MTV show called Till Death Do Us Part, Carmen and Dave, which unsurprisingly gave the impression that the two were genuinely happy together. It wasn't meant to last, though, and in 2006, their marriage fell prey to the oldest of celebrity couple hindrances, conflicting schedules. An anonymous source close to the former couple said at the time, the reality of it is that they're better off as best friends. Navarro has multiple major bands in his resume, but there have been whispers that an even bigger group once courted him for the guitarist spot. In a 2010 interview for the Talking Metal podcast, Navarro confirmed rumors that he once almost joined Guns N' Roses. This came close to happening when Izzy Stradlin left the band in 1991, and Axl Rose even called Navarro to offer him a place in the band, but it never came to be. Navarro says there were multiple reasons why he was ultimately never welcomed to the jungle, but that his significant heroin addiction at the time was the main culprit. According to Guns N' Roses Central, the sad story of a man who was living the rock star lifestyle too hard to join arguably the greatest rock band of the time almost had a heartwarming epilogue when Navarro joined forces with Guns N' Roses in the late 1990s to play on a song of theirs. 
Unfortunately, the song in question was Oh My God, which the fan site shrugs off as forgettable. For years, Navarro nursed such an impressively awful drug habit that Jane's addiction might as well have been called Dave's addiction. According to Detox to Rehab, the guitar player's drugs of choice were heroin and cocaine, and his drug addiction wasn't exactly cured by the lingering trauma, fear, and loss the murder of his mother caused. Navarro's 2015 documentary Morning Sun pulled no punches about his addiction and even featured graphic footage of his drug use from his younger days. Fortunately, by the time the documentary came out, he was living a much healthier lifestyle. He stopped using both cocaine and heroin in the late 1990s, stopped intravenous use altogether sometime around 2000, and says he's been completely clean and sober since 2012. Navarro may be most famous for Jane's addiction, but as Guitar World points out, it's hardly the most famous band he has played with. From 1993 to 1998, Navarro was the guitarist for the Red Hot Chili Peppers and was part of the recording lineup when they released 1995's One Hot Minute. However, it was a difficult time for everyone involved. Not only did the band's faithful fans have difficulty accepting Navarro as a full-fledged Chili Pepper, the band members seemingly couldn't get out of bed in the morning without hurting themselves in one way or another. MTV News writes that Navarro's tenure in the band was marked by a series of disasters ranging from motorcycle accidents to drug relapses, and his exit was a weird mess of conflicting statements. Everyone involved praised each other and their time together, but Navarro himself said he quit the band, while singer Anthony Kiedis called the lineup shuffle a, quote, completely mutual parting based on creative differences, and Guitar World says the guitarist was fired. The creative differences part is pretty much the only thing everyone's narratives seem to agree on. Kicking a heroin habit can be difficult, especially when your job requires you to revisit a past situation that had you at your worst. According to Alternative Nation, this was the unfortunate scenario Navarro faced in 1997 when the recently reunited James Addiction started rehearsing. To make things worse, vocalist Perry Farrell had not yet discovered the joys of sobriety, so when Navarro stepped in the room, a relapse he later described as epic was all but imminent. Feeling that the music would be infinitely better on heroin, Navarro decided his bottle of mineral water was unable to satisfy his cravings. He and Farrell soon got so high that it evoked an oh no, here we go again reaction from drummer Stephen Perkins. Navarro describes the tour that followed as one of the most over-the-top, drug-fueled things he has ever done and says he was easily the worst junkie of the band, using so openly and blatantly that he later called it dangerous and disgusting, even if he did have a pretty good time. However, one guy who enjoyed himself significantly less was Red Hot Chili Pepper Flea, who took care of bass duties for the tour and, as a former drug addict, was not a fan of Navarro's antics. In 2015, Stone Temple Pilots and Velvet Revolver singer Scott Weiland died in his sleep at age 48. It might initially seem odd that Navarro was the guy who led the outpouring of tributes for the frontman, but as Alternative Nation notes, the two were good friends. Wyland, according to Rolling Stone, suffered from his own share of inner demons and substance abuse problems, and he died of an accidental overdose on a tour stop in Minnesota. Wyland made a big difference in Navarro's life and mental health outlook by hooking the guitarist up with his current therapist. Navarro still keeps Wyland close at heart. In a 2018 Instagram post, he shared a photo of an unfinished letter Wyland had once started writing to him. It reads, Dave, my only real concern for you and I is that, sadly, the letter will never be finished. The fame game is a difficult one, and sometimes there are casualties. According to NME, one that hit Navarro particularly hard was the death of Soundgarden and Audio Slave frontman Chris Cornell, who took his own life in 2017 after struggling with depression for years. Cornell and Navarro knew each other, and when they toured together in 2003, they fell into a habit of meeting people in rehab, hanging out with them and helping them towards sobriety. While interviewing Cornell's audio slave bandmate Tom Morello in 2018, Navarro opened up about the profound pain he suffered when he heard the news of the singer's death, saying, To still have that hole in yourself and still feel that depression and loneliness and isolation, especially on tour, I identified so deeply with that, and I felt so much loss and pain about that. That's the one that hit me the hardest. He claimed he put on Soundgarden and began weeping inconsolably because he was so familiar with the kind of depression Cornell had been fighting with. 
Navarro isn't one to shy away from talking about his mental health struggles, particularly because doing so can help others in the same situation. According to Billboard, the musician has been as close to the darkest parts of the human mind as a person can possibly be. In 2018, the suicides of Anthony Bourdain and designer Kate Spade prompted Navarro to write an Instagram post about his own disturbingly close call with ending his life. At one point, things were so bad for the guitar player that he actually wrote a suicide note, stockpiled pills, and even planned out how to distribute his belongings to his surviving family. However, as a last-ditch effort, he decided to reach out to his loved ones, which was enough to stay his hand and make him decide to seek professional help. Fortunately, therapists, psychiatrists, medication, and hospitalization eventually pulled him back from that dark place. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK.